Okay, good morning, folks. About two minutes out. Once again, if you could please move in. We do have seats available. Start uh, reducing the talking. I'd appreciate it. About two minutes out, we do have seats up front. All right, good morning, folks. Good morning. Buddy Bloxham, Plans Chief, Innocent Engineering Team 3. It's your operational briefing. I ask you, please, silence your cell phones. Any sidebar conversations, please take them out back so we can get forward and moving with the briefing. I'm going to start off with the management objectives. Fight fire aggressively while maintaining safe work practices to minimize threats to the public. Emergency responders, all actions and efforts will focus on safeguarding the citizens and resources of Tehama and Butte counties. Minimize the damage to structures private and public property, and other improvements in the fire area. Protect natural, cultural, and heritage resources. Continue to foster and maintain positive relationships with all local cooperators and stakeholders. Cell phone, please. Ensure coordinated and timely and accurate release of public information. Maintain fiscal accountability. Keep costs commensurate with values at risk. Control objectives, the box. Keep the fire north of the Skyway. Keep the fire east of Highway 899. Keep the fire south of Highway 44. Keep the fire west of Skyway, Skyway to Humbug, Humbug Summit. Current situational update, night operation, Jed Gaines. All right, good morning. Uh, we'll start down in Branch 5. Alpha Bravo Charlie continues to look really good, although uh, we did have a couple of flare-ups along the edge of the line yesterday that uh, still need to be mitigated and put out. Uh, Branch 10, Echo Hotel looking really good. The fire's continuing to back down. We do have indirect dozer line at the toe of the slope near Derryville, and it's continuing to back down into the grass till it hits that. Uh, up top on Branch 10 yesterday, the fire crossed Highway 36 impacted the community of Paynes Creek, Sky Ranch, and Minton. We had structure defense going on there last night uh, with a lot of good work. We had to wake up six strike teams of Charlies out of the hotels to come in and surge them in last night to help for structure defense. So there's a lot of folks out there that have been uh, double shifted. The fire in Minton, the fire laid down around one o'clock this morning. We were able to get in and with the dozers and start going direct on some of that across Highway 36. They have a good plan. It's currently backing into Battle Creek. And then we have dozers from Hogback Ridge going to indirect to Highway 36. So hopefully that'll be done sometime late morning. Uh, Branch 15, they went out yesterday, were able to get a plan, and they've got resources coming in to support their plan out in Branch 15. Branch 20, uh, continue. We got a spot yesterday on the other side of 32. They were able to pick that up. We had multiple slops on the other side, uh, on the edge of, of uh, the line there on 32 that they're able to pick up. We have a contingency group out by Butte Meadows, and they're working really well getting that put in on Butte Meadows, heading over to Highway 32. End of report. Weather, Jeff Tonkin. Good morning. Uh, obviously, we had uh, a fair amount of cool and moist air move into the central and north valley this morning. Um, it looks like most of the RHs this morning, the recoveries just generally about the southern half of the complex are running about 50 to 60 percent here, and uh, the northern half is about 40 to 50 percent. So as we move northward, we're, we're going to lose a little bit of that marine influence as you get northward. But 
all, all in all for today, uh, relative humidity across the entire perimeter should get down to about 25% today. So um, that's about a 10% improvement from yes, 10 to 15% improvement from yesterday. So uh, a more moist day today. Temperature wise, we're gonna see about a 10 to 15 degree drop in temperatures this afternoon. Generally the northern half of the perimeter will see uh, temperatures um, getting up into the lower, uh, lower 90s, uh, perhaps higher 80s and uh, along the higher elevations here, uh, generally around the higher 70s, so a much cooler day today. Wind-wise, um, we're gonna see generally a south wind across the entire perimeter uh, today at about four to six miles per hour, maybe some gust to 10 in the afternoon. But on the northern half here, we're gonna see more of a westerly influence, uh, southwest and west across the, uh, the north piece here, and perhaps a little gust here in the afternoon about eight to 10 miles per hour with gusts of 15. So um, still that's a, a decrease of winds from what we saw the last couple of days, about a five mile per hour disc decrease. <clears throat> One more thing, uh, we saw a lot of instability the last couple of days with columns rotating and a lot of fire whirls. Uh, don't expect to see that as much today. We do still have some upper level instability. In fact, you can see some cloud cover around. There is some mid-level moisture up there. Um, Still going to see some big plumes, but uh, not expecting as much of that uh, surface-based uh, rotation and fire whirl action. Fire behavior, Scott Wies. All right. In the fire area, there's a high fuel load, abundance of grass. There's areas out there that have no fire history, a lot of dead and down, and a lot of logging slash. There's 40 miles of line out there on that fire. The heat signature is huge. Yesterday burned 150,000 acres. Um, we saw multiple plumes, four to five plumes um, exaggerating this. I wanna talk about the plume dominated fire. What's happening at there with that convective column rising, you're gonna get a strong inflow of winds. Well, those inflow of winds gonna go up the column and it's gonna blow out and start making erratic gusty winds. And those winds, they'll throw out spots, they'll, they'll act of the fire. Yesterday, the general wind was very low, but we saw this huge fire activity. And that was because of this plume-dominated fire. Um, independently, a plume-dominated fire is very dangerous. This one, we have multiple plumes working together. Very dangerous situation out there. Um, we just heard the weather report. This is the best day as far as weather conditions that we're gonna experience this week. Low temperatures, high relative humidity, good moisture recovery at night. But because of that huge heat signature out there, we are still gonna get plume domination out there and probably be, we're gonna still get those multiple plumes out there. Um, the F-band, my job is to predict fire behavior, figure out where the fire is gonna go, what it's gonna do. But the most important part of my job is to keep line personnel safe. Inside your IAP, there's three documents in there I want you guys to read and brief your crews. The fire behavior forecast, the fuel advisory for herbaceous fuels, and the plume dominated fire effects. Safety, David Sargenti. Good morning, your safety products are on page seven and page eight in addition to the ones you just heard. Please utilize those, review those with your crews and document that on your 214. I'm going to talk to you about a couple things today. First is a crew briefing. Some of you, this is your first uh, shift on the fire, so make sure you spend that time today before you leave camp, understand what your role is today, understand where you're going and how you're going to get there. Your, your crews deserve that briefing and you're the supervisors that are going to be giving that to them. Second is hazard mitigations. As you get to your work assignments, take the time, do the risk analysis, and put in your lookouts communications, escape routes, and safety zones. Make sure we've mitigated those hazards. And finally, for your folks, hydration, nutrition, and pace for the day is your responsibility as the supervisors on this incident. Make sure you maintain each of those and do your crews a, a good job on, on that. Finally, there'll be eight safety officers, line safety officers on the line today to support you. The safety shop is located in the building right here. Please come see us if you need anything and have a great shift. Operations, Jeremy Pierce. All right, good morning. Team three, we're gonna uh, roll call all the way down to the branch and divisions, and then at breakout, they'll do the additional roll call. 
Starting in the Butte zone, Dyer. This will be referred to as Butte Operations. Alpha, uh, excuse me, Branch 5, Lee. Here. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Tau. Branch 10, or excuse me, Branch 20, Norman. Here. Trainee Bartow. Here. Lima, Alvarez. Here. Nora, Clifford. Here. Oscar, Tope. Oh, Top. Forest Ranch Structure Group, Cunningham. Here. Cohasset Structure Group, Betham. All right. So starting over in that Butte zone, uh, down at the heel, we're still getting some slop over, we're still getting some spot fires. I ne we need to really mop that up and continue to patrol that and make sure it doesn't come out around us. As we move up into Victor, Tango, Oscar, um, we're gonna, we still have the structure groups up in the Forest Ranch area. Uh, we've had a lot of homes that have been impacted up there. We cannot lose any more homes. We have the resources up there. Please patrol that. We haven't lost any on, on additional days following that fire front up through Cohasset and into Forest Ranch. Let's continue with that. It's a difficult process to mop up and to patrol that area. And as that fire comes out of the Big Chico drainage and makes its runs up to 32, we continue to have some structures that are impacted. So move your resources, be flexible in that area, and uh, work with those divisions. Our main goal is to hold 32. It's been a struggle every day, but we've been successful every day. And that's because the folks have been up there, have really been uh, putting a, a good firefight on. Every time a spot fire happens, there's a plan put in place, the dozers are getting to it, the, the aircraft are also helping. Please continue to do that. It's a, it's a must that we hold that 32. Um, we have a lot of communities up there that are under evacuation warnings as well as evacuation orders, and it greatly affects that. Moving up into the uh, Branch 20 area, um, as, as, that, as that fire continues up to the, we'll call it the northeast, We've got a lot of dozer line that we're putting in. It's all indirect. We've got a lot of folks out there, a lot of work and a lot of iron. So continue wrapping that corner and, and uh, coming up with a plan to wrap it back into the 32. I think we've got a really good plan. We've got a lot of good folks out there to do that. Thank you. All right. Moving down into the Butte contingency area, uh, Boston. So for that contingency, they're going to come up with a plan uh, the big map plan, and they're going to continue working on that, uh, expecting a large fire growth that we've had. So uh, good work on that. Thank you for d taking care of that. Tehama Zone, Jerry. Yeah. X-Ray, Bakken. Correction, Branch 10, Bakken. Delta, Echo, and Hotel. Hotel will have Harris. Delta and Echo are uh, TBD at this point. So that's this uh, lower section over here, that uh, Bravo, Delta, uh, Charlie. We did have a spot fire yesterday in that area, so let's plan on another one today. So let's keep mopping up, keep uh, patrolling that line, and let's pick up those spot fires. We cannot lose what we've gained down there. So let's continue with that process over there. Moving into branch 15, bots. And then we've got uh, Juliet Schmidt. Kilo is a TBD. Okay. So over in Branch 15, up in the uh, Ishii Wilderness area, up in the forest, up in that area, as we're working around there, that fire has moved aggressively every day. We haven't had a lot of chance to go direct, but there is a lot of indirect continue with that and plan on that rapid fire expansion. Um, we do have some structure protection groups up there as well to help out up in the mineral area. All right, moving down, we've got the Tehama structure group and uh, over in the Tehama zone. Um, we've also continued, yesterday we had a, that firefight, we established a bunch of structure groups up there. So this morning we need to Get up there, get those structure groups all organized. We have uh, some leadership up there that's going to do that. It's going to be a little hectic, a little crazy in there because they're continuing to do structure defense as we're speaking. So those structure groups in the Manton area, Mineral area, Sky Ranch area, and Paines Creek area, 
They all have structure groups up there. And you'll, we have resources up there. We're going to plug them in. Right now in Paines Creek, they had a firefight. They went direct on that. Um, it, it impacted that community. Uh, we had a great defense last night. Not a lot of loss. Appreciate that work. In Manton, it held up on the ridge. They're going direct on that ridge up in Manton. We're going to continue with that process. We expect to hold that ridge. It's uh, a lot of resources, and it, we're having success up there. But the community of Manton is still threatened. So we want to continue with that line and tie it back in to the west so that we can uh, close that door on Manton itself. And then in mineral, we do expect mineral to be impacted today. We talked a little bit about it. There's a good plan up there. We have a lot of resources. So please continue with that process. And Sky Ranch, same thing. We had a good firefight up there. Uh, direct structure protection was done yesterday. Let's continue with patrolling that area, mopping up, and make sure we don't lose any other structures. With that, have a good day. Air Operations, Matt Stanford. Good morning. Available today, we have multiple air tankers that are going to be flying from S2Ts all the way up to VLATs. So please understand that those aircraft will be dropping large amounts of retardant. Be aware of the situation when you're around them. For helibases, we have two helibases now, one in the north and one in the south. For the Butte zone, we have a Chico helibase. There will be 12 helicopters. Nine of those are water dropping with two helcos. For the Red Bluff helibase will be nine water droppers, a total of 11 helicopters, and two helcos. Look up, look down, look around. Make sure you understand that there could be loose branches falling out of the trees with all this water and all this retardant coming out. For the Butte Zone, TAC 166.550 is your TAC. For the Red Bluff is 166.6125. Those are to contact the helicopters for water drops. Air to ground eight is command. That is to contact air attack and helco. We have a daytime hoist, the Firehawk, copter 606, copter 823, 24-hour hoist coming out of Reading. We have night water dropping and UAS operations going on this evening. Page 44 is where you'll find your helicopter assets, and please, no unauthorized UAS slash drone operations. Have a safe day. Communications, Tom Webb. Good morning, Tom Webb, Communications Unit Leader. Um, CDF Command 2, Tone 10. For the uh, Tehama Zone, Tone 11 seems to work a little bit better down here in the Butte Zone for you. Like uh, the Air Ops was saying, CDF command, Air to Ground 8 is our Air to Ground Command. Again, that's for division and, uh, level and up. Personnel that we talking with the aircraft with the uh, supervision, and then we've got the Tehama zone and the Butte zone noted in the 205, like he read off. Please pay attention to which one you're in and which tact air to ground tactical you're using. Reminder that that is for tactical operations, directing the water dropping aircraft in that from the engine company level. Radio repairs are set up over by the convan and cloning this morning. If you need those kind of accessories, we can assist you over there. Be patient with us. The line is long. There's a lot of folks here to get clones. We're a little limited on staffing. Another reminder, unauthorized frequencies are not allowed. The frequencies in the 205 are what's assigned to this incident. Do not, I repeat, do not be using other frequencies that for squirrel nets or things like that as your crew nets running around. We've had interference with operations in the Tehama unit already. I'm going to expect as we get this many people, we're going to have issues with other, other units around us. Please do not be doing that. We will be listening. The FCC is around, and the fines for those things are not pretty. Have a good day. Medical, Chris Urey. Good morning. Today's medical plan will be page uh, 46 in your IAP. At the bottom of the 206 is the reporting instructions. If you have any line emergencies, go over with the, your crews and morning briefings this morning. Know the procedures. If you have a line emergency, follow those procedures. We'll get you the help that you need. Uh, today, we will have line medics and EMTs uh, out on the line for you in addition to three ALS ambulances. Uh, keep in mind, we do not have any REMS teams assigned to the incident as of yet. Uh, CalMAT is here in base camp. If you have any medical supply issues or needs uh, or medical issues that you need to be addressed, Go see them. They're located over towards the MKU and the two yurt tents. MERT is also in base camp. They're set up in the yurt tents over by where a CDCR sleeping is. 
Um, with that, have a safe shift. Logistics, Steve Doman. Good morning. On page 53, you'll find your ICP map. Um, we do have a hydration of lunches located out in the engine parking area. Uh, supply is fully up and running and it's located next to the MKU. Uh, we do have showers and laundry and the laundry is a 24 hour service so we can get a 24 hour turnaround on anything you turn in. Uh, traffic as a reminder, we have a one way traffic pattern here through camp uh, so please maintain your speeds. Uh, for ground support on page 54, uh, we do have fueling locations at three locations right now. We have it here in the ICP, we have it at Ryan and Marauder, and for those in the north, we also have it up, set up at the Red Bluff at Tehama uh, Fairgrounds. Uh, I do have a 24-hour contact line for any line emergencies. If you want to take out a pin, I'll get that to you for any ground support. It's going to be 919-960-2000. Seven zero seven seven. So as a reminder, if you have any line emergencies out there on the line, if you need any mechanical repair, you can call that number. We'll get someone to you. And additionally, uh, yesterday we started pushing some uh, resources, logistical support up to the Tehama Fairgrounds. Uh, we do have that hydration trailer set up there, like I said, that fueling, and we push some more support services up there. Thank you. Have a safe shift. Information, Blanca Mercado. Good morning. If you could turn to page 48 in the IAP. At the top of the page, you'll see the current incident status box. If you're clear to copy, I have the most current numbers. Acreage is at 307,368. That's 307,368. We're at 0% containment. And total personnel is at 2,484. That's 2484. Just to the right of the page below, you'll see the two QR codes. The first one's for the California State Penal Code 409.5. It allows the media to be at scenes of any disaster. Just below that, we have the CAL FIRE social media policy. Please become familiar with both. Our trailer is located at the entrance of base camp. If you have any photos or videos, please come see us. Uh, additionally, lost and found is already set up. Thank you. Have a safe shift. Finance, Chrissy Schaefer. Good morning. The finance message is located on page 50 of today's IAP. For hired equipment, if you haven't done so already, please check in with the time unit and drop off your agreement. Line supervisors, if you need a shift ticket book, there's two gentlemen over here off to my right under this large tree that have shift ticket books. If you don't get them from them, they're also located in the time unit. Um, please make sure you drop off those shi shift tickets at the end of every shift. Damage claims and injuries, regardless of how small, please report them by utilizing the QR code at the bottom of the page or go direct with our comp claims unit leader. His contact information is within the finance message. We ask that you re uh, track all water usage by using the QR code also on the bottom of the page or using the water usage report that's located in the IAP. For local government, your uh, OES rep is located in their command trailer in front of the finance building. building. And lastly, this is a cost share fire. We are moving into cost apportionment. So in the very near future, we will begin debriefing line supervisors on resource accountability and operational activities. If you have any questions, finance building is located off to your left in the large gray metal building. Have a safe shift. Okay, a couple of reminders. Uh, out back uh, along the A-frame building are the division breakouts. Unassigned resources will be over here off to my right, so please report over there if you're not assigned. As far as meetings, next cooperating would be 1,000 hours over in the Harvest Building. Uh, liaison is uh, over here off to my left. Uh, our next planning meeting will be at 1,700 hours as well in the Harvest Building, and your next operational briefing will be here tomorrow morning at 0700 hours. And closing comments, Unified ICs, Billy C. and Todd Mack. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank everybody for the aggressive, safe, strategic attack that's been going on. Cascading events, moving over jurisdictions, county lines, forest boundaries, and unit boundaries. Safe, strategic, aggressive firefighting. That's all I'm going to ask you to continue to do. Thank you. All right, good morning. Here we go. Obviously, uh, a dynamic incident. It's been growing 5,000 acres an hour since the inception of, or the ignition of this incident started. Okay, just to put that in perspective, we're looking at almost eight square miles an hour. This thing's taken out. We're in multiple units, multiple counties, impact to multiple agencies. 
law enforcement, fire, public safety in general. Today we've got almost three times the amount of personnel that we had yesterday morning. We still don't have enough. Okay, today I need you to be safe. It's going to be another dynamic day. We've got a different look out here, different feel out here today. Different wind pattern, different moistures in the air. Take advantage for the line personnel out there and the supervision. Be aggressive, be offensive when you can, and back up to defense when you need to. We need to make sure everyone goes home at the end of the day safely. Thank you. Once again, unassigned resources to my right. Division breakouts on the back concludes your briefing. Thank you.